Uh, Paul, we've all probably been guilty, certainly we have here, uh, of short-termism. What's the next phase? What's the next phase? What's hop- uh, what's opening? What's happening next? It, 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 from a public health point of view, that there is real value, I assume, in, in a nine-month plan. Morning, Kieran. Yes, Morning. I think it's absolutely essential. And I think the time has come, if not before, uh, to generate a strategy for that will take us over uh, the next nine months, if not beyond. I think there's this sense, you know, that the vaccine will come along and the virus will disappear, you know, in the coming months or coming year. But I think we have to plan for for being around this virus for some time. So I think it's a good thing that it's that that discussion is taking place. Okay, so uh, pre- prepare for the worst, hope for the best. The, a good policy, probably in terms of a vaccine. Let, let us look at specific areas then, when it comes to, to public health uh, and society at large, and people out and about. Do you imagine in nine months' time, outside of Kildare Leash and Offaly this morning, it, it will look pretty much like it does today? Masks in indoor spaces, caps, and the amount of people in indoor spaces, and and social distancing at all times. Well, I think we've learned here on how to control this virus. And if you look at the measures that uh, control this virus, it, it's those measures like social distancing, good hygiene, you know, compliance in terms of wearing masks, limiting you know, large indoor gatherings. Uh, but that also needs to be combined with very good uh, test, trace, uh, isolate uh, systems. So they're the type of measures that I think always need to be in place. One of the things, I guess, that worry, and I'm reading some of the reports this morning in terms of some of the detail that's coming out about the strategy, is this idea again that it's sort of underpinned by always going to lockdown, you know, whether it's local lockdown, uh, full national lockdown. And again, that concerns me a bit because I think that's always the default fallback. And I think we need to move beyond that, especially in terms of uh, getting the country up and running again and in terms of trying to mitigate, you know, the damage that has been done to the economy. Okay. But also other healthcare issues, especially non COVID healthcare. So I think we need to be more imaginative in terms of and pro active in terms of trying you to think deal with a, these problems rather than resorting to lockdown. Do you think there's a bit of knee jerkism that goes on still at the moment? There's a legacy of it there that, you know, when, when numbers go up, immediately reach for the lockdown button. I think there's a narrative, and it's very rarely challenged here, and to be honest, I think there's a narrative there that in terms of we got to a really good place during the summer, and that was entirely due to lockdown. Now, I would take a different view. I think if you look at the data, I think the data shows that what we were doing before the full lockdown and those measures that I just mentioned earlier, they were the measures that brought uh, our numbers down significantly. And you also saw as we moved out of lockdown, the numbers remained low and that R value actually decreased uh, even more. Now we're running into some difficulties now because now we have a, a number of clusters. But again, what we need in place there is a really strong surveillance system and that seems to be failing us. And again, we're coming back to discuss, you know, the testing and tracing mm-hmm. system and the surveillance just doesn't seem to be as it should be.